Hi, my name is Kelsey Harder. I am a licensed mental health counselor as well as a nationally certified counselor. And I'm a therapist with the Confluence Health Behavioral Health Department. Today we are talking about uh, health and wellness and how we can start to focus on our wellness regardless of what size we are today. Uh, this is the fourth in our series of mental health talks and I just want to remind everyone who's tuning in via uh, Teams to mute your audio just so that we don't get any feedback. All right, so a brief overview of what we're talking about today. We're going to be focusing on health, wellness, and why sometimes achieving this and maintaining it can be so difficult. We're going to talk about the idea of health at every size. And in addition, we're going to touch on intuitive eating, what that looks like, some of the benefits, and some tips for successfully starting to intuitively eat on your own. All right, so. The health and wellness industry is worth $4.2 trillion, and that includes a 12.8% increase between 2015 and 2017. In addition, as a part of that, the weight loss industry is worth $48 billion, which I don't know about you, but is more unfathomable than I can picture. Um, this includes gym memberships, vitamins and su supplements, meal replacement shakes, workout DVDs, weight loss pills, you name it. So obviously this is going to make up a large portion of the media that we digest, both in the content that we're seeing out in the world, as well as advertising for the same content. Paired with the messages that we're receiving from our providers, as well as everything that we see out in the world, health and wellness is understandably on everybody's radar. Especially right now in our COVID-19 era, when everything is pretty uncertain, pretty stressful, and we're all trying to be as healthy as we can. A large focus of this is on weight loss and obtaining and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. But if all that is so important, then why is it so hard to get to sometimes? Here we go. All right, so this is the difficulty with your traditional diet. We start with the desire to lose weight. Cool. Desire to be healthier, have a healthy lifestyle, et cetera, et cetera. So we start and we go on a diet. This includes food restriction and exercise. So restriction meaning we're taking in less calories than we were previously. The result of that is a temporary reward, typically in how you feel uh, a little bit more energized or you start to have those first couple of pounds drop off. Eventually, this doesn't seem to be super sustainable and our willpower stops working. We're not meant to have endless willpower here. And when we do that, uh, we start to experience temptations and cravings. I know you know what I'm talking about here. As a result, our old habits come back. We stop exercising. We go back to some of those comfort foods that, that really do it for us. And as a result, we feel like we've failed. And then we feel shameful about ourselves. What do you think happens then? Then we start to emotionally eat. We binge and we feel even further shame about our behaviors that we're engage engaging in. And we're binge eating and then overeating as well which then leads to, you guessed it, um, additional weight gain, depression, increased shame, and typically gaining back whatever you did lose and possibly a couple extra pounds. That all leads us back to the beginning with a desire to lose weight. So as you can see, this is a never ending hamster wheel here. No matter what we do, we're going to go through typically the same, the same steps. And as a result, only around 5% of people lose a, lot, lose a large amount of weight and find it a sustainable lifestyle to maintain. So what, are, what options do we have? I want to propose this idea of health at every size. It's the idea that we can take the body that we're in today and start to treat it well, treat it with the respect that it deserves and find health right here today.
Health at Every Size focuses on the effect of culture and weight and then adds in science. It is very evidence-based and in a little bit I'll show you one of the books that I would recommend if you want to learn more about Health at Every Size and you'll see half of the book is literally research-based material. Health at Every Size focuses on this idea that we have a set point. Our set point is the weight that you maintain when you're not trying to diet, when you're listening to your body, when you are just doing life, you're not really focused on it. It's the weight that you maintain when you don't fixate on your weight or other food habits and when you're not dieting. This actually tends to be about a 10 to 20 pound comfort range that your body is comfortable physically being in. When we excessively diet, we turn on a, um, a message in our brain that thinks that we're trying to starve it. And so what the body does is it hangs on to every single calorie, every single gram of fat, every carb, because it feels like it's going to need it. And so then eventually when we stop dieting, we end up having like we said before, with the, the cycle, we end up gaining back whatever we lost. And then because we've damaged our metabolism a little bit, our set point increases. Health at every size is based on biology and the idea that your willpower didn't make you break your diet. Your biology made you break your diet. So what is the answer then if, if, this, if dieting, traditional dieting doesn't really seem like it's going to do it for us, what else can we do? We'll enter intuitive eating. Intuitive eating is a way of looking at our relationship with food that promotes balance, satisfaction, and overall wellness. There is a health aspect to it too. With intuitive eating, no foods are quote off limits. All foods fit, it creates a space for a food freedom and recovery from that diet cycle that I talked about a couple minutes ago. Intuitive eating also addresses the emotional reasons why we eat the way we do and why we, why we reach for certain foods, such as the comfort foods, the foods that we can't seem to stay away from. Intuitive eating also incorporates mindfulness techniques so that we can practice experiencing our hunger as well as our satisfaction level in the different foods that we choose. Intuitive eating also encourages gentle nutrition and gentle exercise, providing a balanced, really overall healthy way of looking at what it means to be healthy and well. So this is just a graphic of there's 10 principles with intuitive eating. I'm not going to get into all of them today because we would be here literally all day and nobody has time for that. But I am going to go into a couple of my favorites and some that I feel like I can give you some really positive, quick, quick tips to practicing intuitive eating using these principles. The biggest thing to remember with intuitive eating is we're essentially going back to how a toddler eats. If you've ever interacted with a toddler at snack time and they have their little bowl with crackers or cookies or grapes, they can leave like one or two cookies and you're like, how in the world is this kid able to do that? Well, it's because kids know when they're full. They haven't had the experience of a school teacher or somebody at, at lunchtime telling them to finish everything that they ate. They're trusting their natural instincts to only eat what they absolutely need and then to stop when they're full. It's really a, a simple idea that we have lost sight of over the span of our lifetime. So if you remember nothing else, think about the toddler and let's get back to eating like toddlers. Just maybe a little bit more diverse in our food choices. Just saying. So some benefits of intuitive eating include feeling less out of control, having more food freedom, not feeling like you can only eat certain foods because of calorie content or nutrition content, being able to eat all the foods that you love in moderation. Intuitive eating also can promote increased self-esteem and decreased stress and anxiety around food. And it's also research-based along with health at every size and can lead the research studies show that using intuitive eating on a regular basis can 
have physical health benefits as well. One of them not including, but not only um, increased healthy cholesterol. Alrighty, so this is our how to do it. So something that I wanna drive home with intuitive eating is um, a lot of people go into thinking that they're gonna eat intuitively, hoping to lose weight. And that is super possible, um, but not for everybody. Some people, their weight stays the same. Some people, their weight increases. It really is just a matter of finding that comfort set point for your body that best fits for you. And so there's gonna be a level of sometimes stress and anxiety associated with that, and really practicing some body acceptance to work towards being okay with getting to where your body's happy place is. So, first of all, with intuitive eating, one of the principles is honor your hunger, and then another one is respect your fullness. We do this with this awesome hunger scale, the hunger fullness scale. It goes from zero to 10, and you're gonna use it for um, when you feel like you're hungry and ready to eat, asking yourself, how hungry am I? So you can see um, zero to two says that you're overly hungry. Three to seven is kind of a, a sweet spot. And then eight, nine, and 10 is where you're overly full. So when you start to eat, um, check in with yourself, know where you're starting at, and then know where you wanna finish too. Ask yourself midway through your meal, how full am I? We tend to overeat when we get too hungry, AKA when we get hangry. So it's helpful to have snacks with you at all times, stuck in your desk drawer, in your purse, um, within reach so that if you carry a purse, it within reach so that you don't ever get too hungry. We also tend to overeat when we're not paying attention to how much or how long we've been eating and therefore how full we are. When, when we, we eat, we want to try to get to a five to seven range, which if you can't see it on the screen, five would be neutral. You're not hungry, you're not full. Six is a slightly full stomach and seven is comfortably satisfied. Some people might find that they like to stop at eight and that's okay. It's wherever you feel your best, but I would recommend trying to stay into a five to seven range, at least until you get super well-versed in checking in with your hunger and fullness levels. Another principle of intuitive, intuitive eating is challenging the food police. So the food police is this idea of the food rules that we've learned throughout our life. Like, Carbs are the enemy. You can't eat after 8 p.m. Um, I can only eat green foods or I have to eat the rainbow. Just a general good nutrition rule. Anyways, instead, let's relax those views. Okay, so I'm gonna eat the rainbow, but I'm also gonna have ice cream for dessert. Or uh, carbs might be the enemy, but our brain actually needs a certain level of carbs every day in order to function well and effectively. So it's gonna be important to look at what does my body uniquely need? What works for me might not work for you, might not work for the next person. All going back to why it's important to pay attention to how food feels in your body and how the hunger fullness scale differs for you based on time of day, time of year, and situation that you're in. The more we challenge the food police, the more food freedom we find around the foods that were previously off limits, the more we find that we can eat a couple cookies and not have to eat the whole package. Another intuitive eating principle that's super important and really brings in the mindfulness and mental health aspect of intuitive eating is honoring your feelings without food. This is a crazy thought, but I believe it's okay to eat emotionally. But would another coping skill be better? Do you have to engage in that binge right now? Would it be better to go for a walk or call a friend or journal? 
If you're physically hungry and you've checked in with the hunger fullness scale, great, it's time to eat. But if you realize you're not physically hungry but still feeling hungry, I challenge you to consider what are you emotionally hungry for? Are you emotionally hunger, hungry for security, for safety, for joy? All of those things can be found in food in some way based on our life experiences. They wouldn't have made food taste so wonderful if it wasn't going to provide an emotional uh, benefit for us as well. So I would encourage you, if you find that you're emotionally hungry for something, pinpointing what that need is, and then if you can, meet that need. If you can't meet that need, try a different coping skill, as mentioned before. And then, if you're still having difficulty, allow yourself to engage in that emotional eating. But you have to be mindful when you do so, and you have to remember your hunger fullness scale. But how do we mindfully eat, right? So here are some suggestions, both for mealtime and your later evening fridge rummaging, which I know we all do. Uh, so first of all, dish up your plate and then sit down at the table. I didn't say couch. I didn't say standing at the counter while your kids are eating. Sit down if you can. There are gonna be limitations to, to all of these, so try to adapt them just to best fit your lifestyle. I know that some of them might not be doable, but maybe some other ones are. Try to limit your distractions. No doom scrolling on your phone, no TV, no reading a book or the newspaper. It's super difficult. I even struggle with this. But if you can tune in, you'll find that you get full a lot faster. You can also set the mood. How can you make your meal time more pleasant? Can you uh, add some soft classical music that's not going to be a distraction? Can you add fun placemats, centerpieces, maybe a themed dinner like Taco Tuesday? Whatever can help make that experience a little bit more joyful for you. A good tip is to set your fork down in between going for a second serving. Take a breath, check in on your, your fullness level. Doing so gives your body just enough of a break to catch up and really communicate with your brain just how full or hungry you're feeling. And then you know, maybe you don't need that second serving. Maybe you do, and maybe you can moderate how much you're dishing up based on what your brain and your body is telling you. Finally, again, try to stop at the five to seven mark. You can always come back later for food, snacks, if you're hungry, if you're physically hungry. Um, yeah, so some tips for, for eating mindfully. Another important intuitive eating principle is respecting your body. This I couldn't emphasize enough. I think that this is just as important as any of the um, tips or tricks that I'm offering today. Really what it comes down to is accepting our bodies. Think of it this way. We accept our shoe size unconditionally, right? I'm a size 10. I'm always gonna be a size 10. That's just the size shoe that I buy. So part of, and I'm not saying to accept it the same way, but we can start to adapt a similar feeling where, okay, well, this is my body. It's not changing today. So I'm gonna treat it with respect. I'm gonna treat it the way that it deserves because it does deserve that. When we move towards body acceptance, even if we can't like feel great about our bodies, if we can just move towards a neutral point, it makes it a whole lot easier to practice wellness. Think about it. You know that high that you get after that diet starts to work and then you wanna do more? It's the same when you start feeling good about yourself. You want to keep treating yourself well. So the same thing applies, but this is a lot more sustainable, healthy, both for your, your physical health and for your mental health. If nothing else, be kind to yourself. Be patient with yourself. Food stuff is tricky. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Not every day is going to be perfect, but remember, with intuitive eating, you're not on the wagon or off the wagon any longer. This is just part of life. This is just 
another day. You know, and you'll have another day tomorrow to try and do things different tomorrow that you didn't do today. Every day is a fresh start. Okay, so I wanted to provide a couple of resources in case you're interested in finding out more information about intuitive eating, some more in-depth material, um, et cetera, et cetera. So the book Intuitive Eating is written by Evelyn Tribbley and Elise Raish. They also put out a fantastic workbook that I would highly recommend. You could almost do the workbook aside from the regular book, but together they're a great companion. The workbook allows you to not only learn about the intuitive eating principles, but also to challenge your own daily practices within a guided manner. And then the next one, Health at Every Size by Dr. Lindo Bacon. I, yes, Bacon. Um, I would highly recommend this one too, as it provides all of the evidence-based scientific background on the problem with traditional dieting. And then it also provides many solutions that are intuitive eating based to um, help you along this new journey. If you're not much of a reader, totally understand. I own spurts myself. There's a couple of podcasts that I would recommend. The food, first is the Food Psych Podcast with Christy Harrison. And the second one is called Body Kindness, Transform Your Health and Never Say Diet Again. That's also a really great book resource. Um, it's just that they also have a podcast that offers a lot more in-depth resource. On YouTube, there is a fantastic short on the channel Adam Ruins Everything, and it's about why extreme diets don't work, and it's, it's fun. And then in print, if you're looking for like something like a book, but maybe shorter, on NPR, they have an article called Trust Your Gut, A Beginner's Guide to Intuitive Eating, and I would highly recommend that as well, as it is written by a woman who has invested a large portion of her career in, in exploring intuitive eating and helping others do the same. So that is health at every size and intuitive eating. Um, I hope that this challenges your perspective on your body and the way that you're treating it. And if nothing else, let's aim to just find a little bit more balance in our day to day. Thanks.